Welcome to DualShock, the Brotherhood of Geeks, PlayStation Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Brett J. Rasmussen, and over here I got my other co-host... Concierge Blaze. Ah! It's now Concierge. I never know... I never know what your name keep, is, Blaze. I gotta keep everyone on their toes. It's, it, I thought it was Guru, and then you said Captain. Well, it's Guru as a, as a, as a base... But I oh. feel that I can't limit myself to only one word that denotes my dominance. So since you're the concierge, can you go get me a sandwich? No. Why? Because I already ate it. Dang it! I concierge myself. You can but no, you can't do that because concierge... According to what rules? Restaurant rules! I don't work for a restaurant. You are a concierge! No. See, see, you're thinking too small. Okay? Oh, oh, oh. I'm oh, looking at oh, the, big, I'm thinking too small the now. big picture here, and, and, and I'm going to be the concierge that breaks the mold, see? Which is what? You'll see. That doesn't help me. You just go ahead. Like you just go ahead. And just do because it. I'm a concierge doesn't mean I'm here to help you. You're here on this show to help me. Yeah, but but that's not where my concierge duties come in. God, you're confusing, Blaze. What? What do you think? It's okay. I just. Yeah, yeah. I like I like I like to smell my hands when I get nervous. <laughs> what? Hey, I'm not trying to kill you here, all right? Oh, yeah, you're not trying you're to kill... You're, like, coughing up a lung over here. Yeah, well, it, I mean, I'm okay. I mean, it hasn't happened yet. Not yet. Yet. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what, but... G- all right, well, anyway... Kajita's K- 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 cock K- and ball torture K- if K- you K- have K- coin. K- 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 <laughs> what? I don't even know what's happening anymore. I'm... I'm all kinds of lost, but like whatever. we're all lost. <laughs> but it's okay. Why? Because that means we can find ourselves. Oh. It's like if you were able to obtain perfection, mm. what would be the point in life? Hmm. True. Yeah. That's very true. But yeah. But I've been doing Blaze. I'm pretty Captain good. Guru, Concierge, blah 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 Blaze. I'm good. Um. Fucking. What have I been doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've been playing more Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. I've been playing some more Apex. I'm getting into that a little bit. How are you liking that? I actually do like Apex. It's fun. Like, I'm not, I don't play it all the time because I just don't go online that much. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's pretty much become, like, my go-to. I had something in my eye, god dang it. Like, for, for playing online. I like the squad-based mechanics, you know, every now and again. I'll get people who actually have mics and we can coordinate. Um, and who aren't idiots? Yeah, the last match I played, actually, I was with two people who were like, we're all about the team, because we know that it's going to benefit us, and we made it to the second, I made it to third place. Mm. So, yeah. And then I think, yeah, I'm um, I'm, I'm still, I don't know if I have a favorite, like, Wraith is my favorite character, Mm -hmm. like, just as a character, as well, like, she's very fun to play with, but as far as, like, my best character, I... Like right now, because I haven't I haven't unlocked Mirage or the Toxic guy. Okay. Um, but I do really like uh, Bangalore, the soldier. Okay. Because, in addition to the smoke grenades and blah whatever, she literally automatically has a passive ability to run faster when being shot at. Ooh. Oh. Which is like hugely wow. useful. That like is. as soon as you start getting damage, you just run faster automatically without using a skill. Wow. So. There's that. Oh wow! So have you has uh, have you felt like the like EA's tentacles have have come into that game yet, or does it feel? I don't like know, a... man. No, I, I I haven't noticed any issues with it. Like I, I mean, they're they're um the the way that you earn stuff, I like. You get a progression system. You unlock new skins and stuff from play from skill, which mm-hmm. I like. And I haven't had to pay anything, so that's a bonus. That's good. Again, like again, I I, I don't. I, I, one of my, I, one of my... E, I did say like EA's tentacles, and again, maybe may, maybe they finally have listened and in that kind of thing. Hopefully, I'm probably. Being I'm too pretty sure that they but... put it out in case Anthem was a failure. I mean, I, yeah, but like, why would they put? Why they? I, I would think they would want to put that out after. No, before. Why? Because then people are already on it, and then they can try Anthem, but they already still have the other one. And also, being that there's no, um, there's no PvP, well, well yeah, there, there's no PvP in Anthem, 
So it fills that void until such a time as they would be able to put it in. Mm -hmm. And I also think that um, a buddy of mine was telling me, and like, and it makes sense. He's like, the squad based mechanic is so that you get your friends to play, you get yeah. more people to play, mm -hmm. which is like, it, it, it's it's a good thing, and it's not really for a bad reason. Like, there's no nothing wrong with that, but it's also like that. That's the reason I think that they did it. Yeah, it's so that like, hey, play with me, download this game, and then you they, they get more players. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard nothing but good things, and like, and whole... I like being able to slide down a hill and gain <clears throat> speed. Nice, nice. I it's mean, got the Titanfall -y aspect, and I've heard that they might introduce mechs. That would be rad from like Titanfall because it's in that universe. In the universe, so. which if they do, then I, I like that's what got me hyped for Titanfall. Is I'm like, oh, new mech assaults. I love that stuff. I think the first game I ever played where I was in a mech was Battlefield 2142 way back in the Jeez, day. Jeez, yeah, that on my Jeez, PC. That's long ago. Yeah, yeah. I think it was probably one of my first PC games, other than uh, Half Life. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. No, I mean, like, I'm glad that you're liking uh, Apex Legends. I'm, I'm. This is something. Apex Legends was something that like EA needed uh, because all their stocks were starting to fall. And <clears throat> honestly, without Apex Legends, I honestly don't think Anthem would have brought them back from <clears throat> the brink. No, because of. Um... Did they make brink? No. Okay, I, I was gonna. Because so. if they did, then I would have had a really I, good at least. On my I hands. don't think so. I could be wrong. No, you're probably right. But uh, I don't think they made Brink. I think the comp the developer that made Brink is now gone. Makes um, sense. But like with Anthem, there's been so much. There's so much. There's been so much animosity. Yeah. At it, not because of the game itself. It's because it's from EA. Mm -hmm. And this is the game that people have been <laughs> pushing and pushing. Like, no, people. EA has been pushing and pushing and Well, pushing. yeah, it's basically been the flagship title that they've been kind of, like, riding on, like, since they announced it. Well, it wasn't even last year. I think it was, like, the year before. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, <clears> I think it's been two years. It's been in development for quite some time now. Yeah. Um, which, um... <laughs> Destiny with jetpacks. <laughs> Destiny with jetpacks? Yeah. Probably. I mean, I, I mean, I've seen gameplay. I've seen reviews of it. I'm, I'm, I'm. I, I've actually, I wanna. I, I would give it a try, but I do not want to pay sixty dollars for it until like. I mean, it's just like, because it's like it looks like it's fun, and I'm not saying I wouldn't have a good time with it, but it's like when it comes to games like that, I don't really like to buy them for full price because I don't play online games in general often enough that I would feel like it was a worthwhile purchase mm -hmm. as opposed to getting a game for free. That I could play, or buying, you know, like a single player or you know, fighting game or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've I've actually been playing Anthem. I went ahead and picked it up, um, and I've I've started playing it. Um, and I don't want to get too deep into it because we are going to re be reviewing Anthem. Um, but it, from what it is, it's very much like you are in a Iron Man suit and flying around and. Blowing up stuff. Uh, I prefer the PC term, exoskeleton. Uh, oh, oh, well, okay, you PC elitist. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. But like, well, actually, I don't play PC games as much anymore, so I'm probably not a PC Look, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with, like, if, if you love playing on PC and everything like that. From what I, yeah, I, I know, like, uh, earlier I was hearing this guy talking about, like, most of the reviews that were coming out were based off the PC version, I guess. And I don't know how much different it is than the console version. I mean, um... With what I've been playing, like, I mean, I have no idea. I don't really play on PC myself, <clears throat> but I do understand why people love playing on PC, whether it is Anthem or any well, other game. it maintains game. graphical dominance. Well, that's yeah. That's how games are made. Yeah, and again, that's... So by default, it's going to have the that, best. And that's why I'm joking with PC elitists. Like, yeah. it's PC the whole, Master Race. PC Master Race. Like, it's the whole thing, like, and again, props to you guys for, like, I, you want to get the latest and greatest thing out there, and you, like, you are just... On point, and that's fine. That's your thing. For me personally, I just like sitting on in a chair like this, or on my couch with a controller in my hand and playing on my TV. And that's just but my own. But you can also use a controller on a PC. I know, I know, I know. It's just I, for me, I, I like well, the I ease of use of a console. Well, also, like I mean, like a high end PC is going to run you way higher than a console. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's not just a console; it's also a PC. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, although the Xbox One X is definitely the closest to a PC. That yeah. I've seen in the console market, which is why it's the best. Yeah. 
So, yeah, but no, but um, I've been playing um, Anthem, um, and it's 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 fun. Like it's flying around. Like it, the navigation of it is really the fun, the best part of that whole game, and it's gorgeous. Jesus Christ, is it gorgeous? Um, so I've been playing that. Uh, I have played uh, Far Cry New Dawn, which it's just more Far Cry. It's just more Far Cry with some RPG elements to it. So there are some changes into uh, in it. Uh, they're small. It doesn't really make a massive change to it. Um, and uh, the the story is fine. Like it's nothing. Again, it's just it's more Far Cry, which is what I signed up for. Mm-hmm. Wasn't expecting uh, asking for anything more than that. <clears throat> and then. Um, yeah, I've been continuing that long platinum run of Kingdom Hearts 3, but uh, that's been kind of on and off. But uh, I've been playing, like, Far Cry. Uh, oh, I've also been playing more Hitman. Nice! Yeah, I'm uh, I'm on the third or fourth mission now. I'm really digging it. Nice. I love pulling off that nice. basic kill. Yeah, no, I mean, that's kind of what's been... Well, it's free this month, so it's... Yeah! I like that. I like that. I like it that it's free Forget for February, it. so... Make sure you go ahead and download that. If you have PlayStation Plus, make sure you add that to your library, even if you don't want to play it right now. And For Honor's free, too. Yes, and that game... I love For Honor. Oh, I, I dig it. it. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I, I enjoy it. But anyway, again, as we have said before, if you have Plus... Go ahead and add those games to your library. They're totally free, and you have them as long as you have Plus. I have tons of games that I get from Plus. I add them to my library. I haven't even touched them yet. But they're games that I get to keep, and I get to play as long as I have Plus. And Wait, like, so once your Plus runs out, you can't play them? No, no, no. It's like Netflix. It's like Netflix. Oh. So like without the subscription, they're locked behind a uh, paywall. So even like, after you've downloaded them? Yeah. So like after, I mean, I just because like I'm like so like, I wouldn't be able to play a digitally downloaded game after my plus runs out, even though I already have it downloaded. Yeah, because it's connected to plus. It's like oh, Netflix. Okay. You can't you can't access the movies and TV. I just shows. haven't ever dealt. I've never been in that situation. So well, yeah, I'm because just you curious. because you need plus in order to play online in order to play online. So oh it's like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's one of those kind of things. But like. Well, I'm simply, you keep your games forever. I have games from when the PS4 first launched, like Contrast and, mm. um, yeah, like Contrast and I can't, Resogun, and I can still, I could play them right now if I wanted to. Um, but if my, let's say my Plus expires, you know, tomorrow, and I choose not to renew it for like another week or two or whatever, I can't play those games because I don't have Plus. You um, still own them, they're still yours, right, so that right. way when you renew... They are bad. I was just honestly curious. No, that's that. fine. No, that's that's fine. And that's I'm here to explain it to you. And I'm playing, here to explain it to you guys too. Um so yeah, let's uh get on going with the first segment that we always start with. News of the Nation! Oh, God. Yeah. What? That's how I feel about the news. Oh. God, jeez. Reggie's leaving us. Oh, God. Yeah, well, just just start off, yes. Um, yes, this is a PlayStation podcast, but I did want to bring this up because this is honestly very important, and um, it, it's, it's, it's kind of, like, important to the video game industry as a whole. It kind of impacts how things can be changing and how PlayStation will kind of be... Can seeing how... Uh, you know, who Reggie is handing the keys to next and then kind of how, what hit, like what his plan is, the new guy's plan is and how PlayStation and Xbox will be, um, responding to it and how, like what his ideas are and everything like that. So I wanted to bring this in. This is, a a PlayStation podcast still, but I didn't want to bring this up. Um, so the first thing is that, uh, Reggie fils is now retiring from Nintendo, uh, in April. Um, so pretty much, uh, Nintendo of America's Reggie fils will retire, and Doug Bowser has been named as the new president of North America. After 15 years in Nintendo of America, almost 13 of which, which, uh, which were as president and COO, Reggie fils will retire, uh, on April 15th of 2019. Nintendo of America's current SVP of sales and marketing is Doug Bowser. He will then succeed Reggie as president. Um, and also, if you want to, Reggie put up his own, like, two and a half minute video of his retirement speech, and I 
highly recommend you guys looking at it. It's 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 very very touching. Um, but this is a quote from uh, part of that speech from Reggie fils Quote, Nintendo owns a part of my heart forever. It's a part that is filled with gratitude as I look forward to departing in both good health and good humor. This is not, quote, game over for me, but instead leveling up to more time with my wife, family, and friends. Uh, and then... Uh, Doug Bowser has said, this is a quote from Doug Bowser, quote, it has been my great fortune to work with and be mentioned by Reggie for four years at Nintendo of America. And rest assured, we will continue to build on his work and evolve and expand our brand. Furthering Nintendo's global mission of creating smiles. There are millions more of those to come. Um, and that's from Doug Bowser. And even in uh, Reggie fils um retirement speech in his video he uh, i love this as well he said uh um what who better to give the keys to the nintendo kingdom than to bowser himself and that is his legal name that is that is not a joke his legal name is called is doug bowser i love it bowser i think was also the name of one of the uh singers in abba oh yeah you know the band abba yeah dancing, dancing queen. Queen. yeah yeah there was a guy in there named bowser because they're from like da, 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 da. That'd be awesome if they played that song when he gets coronated. At the <laughs> that's like what that's his walk up song. That's his walk up song. Yeah. And, he, and he doesn't know, and he's just like, okay, uh, what? <laughs> okay. Everybody confused? Because <laughs> I am. Yeah. Uh, I know I am. I'm especially confused right now. But anyway. Um, but yeah, like, I saw that, and I. Uh, I pretty much was just like, what? No! My yeah. body's not ready! <laughs> yeah, no, Reggie was a good guy. I yeah. Mean, like, I, because, like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm a PlayStation guy, but, like, see, the thing is, it's like, there's, there's Microsoft, there's Sony, and then there's Nintendo, and I feel like Nintendo, like, it's like, it's like the games, it's like the game uh, company that, like, you really can't not love. And they've they've been around forever. They've innovated more. They've than, been here the longest. Yeah, and they've done like the bigs, like Legend of Zelda, Mario, Fire Emblem, like you name it. Yeah, like all of us, all of us. Like you can be as hardcore Sony PlayStation as you want, but it's like you some you somehow Nintendo some has a part of you. Some, yeah, at some like, point in your life. For me, like uh, for me, my first video game console was a PS One. I love my. Mine PS1. was the N sixty four. Yeah, like so, like for me, I had a PS One, so I grew up on Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, mm. and then all like the like TV show, like I like uh, like I have a Power Rangers games and Harry Potter and stuff like that. But then there's also um, games like Tomba, which were PlayStation exclusive, and so on and so forth. Like there's you can name tons of different exclusives from that time that have meant something to someone on the PlayStation on the PS One. But then I also had a Game Boy, a Game Boy Pocket at the time. I had the, I had, I still have the Atomic See Through Purple color. Nice. Yeah. And like, uh, I played like uh, what I think it was Super Mario Brothers Two was the very first uh, Game Boy game I ever played. And then uh, Pokemon Red, uh, not Blue. I love Blastoise, but I got Red back in that time. Um, Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening was my first Game Boy game. Nice. Yeah, I never played Zelda. I never played Zelda until honestly recently. Um, and surprisingly, I love like I love Zelda. Like I like I like a it's because of my like friend group. Who loves Zelda? And they introduced it to me, and they were like, you know, that kind of stuff. So like, like, you need to play this. Where the hell have you been? Yeah, exactly. It's one of those kind of things. But like, Nintendo, no matter what kind of gamer and where you sit, uh, uh, the hardest of hardcore to whether you bleed blue for PlayStation or bleed green for Xbox or you're a Nintendo guy. Like, no matter what, Nintendo has subsequently would be bleeding red. So yes. it's like the natural choice. There you go. <laughs> but, like, the puns and jokes aside, like, Nintendo has impacted our lives as a, as gamers, regardless. And they started out as a card company. They made playing cards. Yeah, and then, uh, I, and then they, uh, it was, I thought it was toys. 
No, they the very first like they. Oh, around, the very first thing. Yeah, like they've been around for a long. Oh time. yeah, they've only been like a, a a video game manufacturer for you know a decent. But like yeah, they started they made playing cards. Mm, okay, well again like it's still like. I just, I, I, this is sad news, but, like, I get it. He's like, I want to spend time with my family. I've done everything I could. I have more money than I'll ever need. <laughs> um, and, like, I, I'm happy for Reggie. Like, I'm, I'm really happy re- for, uh, I'm, I'm very happy for he Reggie. He did well by the company, um, you know, and, like, you know, he had a good time doing it. And, there, like, that's what matters. Well, there was one, uh, I remember this. Do you remember the uh, E3? Uh, no, this was the announcement of the Switch. Remember the announcement of the Switch where they had this big Nintendo Direct in Japan? It was actually a press conference, so they were, like, on the show so. floor. Yeah, yeah. So what happened is that Reggie fils comes into, it looks like a living room, and he comes in, yeah. and he's like, um, uh, I'm paraphrasing, so I apologize. Um, um, you uh, battle to play, play to battle. You know, like, this, th- it's this line, not, it's this line that really kind of, like, is is kind of very interesting. He uh, Reggie Fils-Aimé, uh says, if the game uh, if the game isn't fun, uh, if the game isn't fun, why play it at all? It yeah. was one of those things. And what he was, it was a very very subtle jab, I guess, to because uh, at the time this was like the Switch came out. What I believe two. Uh, the Switch Not came out old. two years ago. Yeah. That was when the that was when the Pro and the X were being announced. Yeah. That was it. And yeah. the whole thing is that PlayStation and Xbox were like, "Look at the graphics. The Pro does 4K and does this." Sure. And Xbox One X was like, "It's the p- most powerful video game system on the on the market." Yeah. And like, here comes the Switch, and Reggie Bizme goes like, "If it's not fun, why play it at all?" And like, and that was a little jab of going like, yeah, we don't have the most powerful graphics. It's not in 4K. It's just 1080p, 60 frames per second. Mm. Um, but the games that we put on here are the most fun. And not in like PlayStation, and Xbox have their own fantastic library of games. I love like we've touted. Even last year, our game of the year last year was God of War itself. Mm. What a fantastic game! Absolutely. Detroit Become Human, Marvel Spider Man. Uh, Infamous Second Son is just a fun game. Um, what is it? Um, I don't even go down the list. Shadow Colossus rem- uh, remake. Uh, Crash Bandicoot. I know that's not exclusive, but it used to be on PlayStation, right. so on and so forth. The point that I'm getting to is, is that PlayStation and Xbox have their own fantastic library of games. But the reason why you buy a Nintendo console is because of their Nintendo. Because of their titles. Like, what you would argue are the Nintendo exclusives. Yep. Mario, Zelda, anything having to do Smash with Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers. Like, that was yeah. my big thing. Mm-hmm. I love Smash. So, like, really, like, with Reggie fils retiring, and I, like, and with, Doug Bowser has been around, like, he, it's not like, oh, here's this new guy. He's been around for a long time, and he was actually on the, uh, press conference floor when the switch was announced Mm -hmm. he was part of the announcement of odyssey yeah um so like i i find this very interesting and honestly when uh he's uh rage vsma is leaving in april which means bowser will be uh leading the nintendo direct for e3 so that's going to be very interesting that should be i still think that um uh satoru wada had the best directs why do you say that just because of his personality, like with the puppets, like he's just holding oh, up the yeah. and he's just like, you know. Oh, are you talking about that fantastic E3? Yeah. I remember where it was Reggie and him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, man. Like that's that's why, like he was the best. He just had such a goof, goofy personality and that's why he's like my favorite. Head. I mean, Reggie's great. I mean, but then Reggie was just the North American. Yeah, he's just he, he's head Satoru of North America. Wada was like the big all of boss. Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, and being be, and that that makes it even cooler because he's like the highest tier, but he's just like super fun and like you know. And that like he knew that it was a company about like creating things for people to enjoy and have fun with, which mm-hmm. is what he wants. And that's what he likes. Mm-hmm. So he's basically he's doing it not for himself as far as a monetary thing. That's just a bonus mm-hmm. by being able to create. And he was a genius. Oh yeah, like that guy was an insanely talented programmer. Yeah, I mean, like for me, like even Shuhei Yoshida, the head of Sony PlayStation, like the guy, 
sits at the top, like, the biggest chair in all of PlayStation, Shuhei Yoshida. And, like, he loves his fans. He, he, he tweets back at every, at any any of his fans and who ask him questions and stuff. And he's very much, like, when he goes to live events, he's very, very open with talking to the public and talking to his fans. Like, Shu, and Shuhei loves games. Like, he tweets of, like, what game he, what games he's playing. He even goes ahead and, like, does a PS4, like, game share on his mm. Twitter. Like, Shuhei Yoshida is pretty much that for PlayStation. Is he good? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I mean, I, I mean skill wise in game. I mean, like, it's a lot of like the like again, like the Shuhei and like a big thing that PlayStation pushes is their is their narrative driven games because right. they have found that that's what they excel at. That's what they've excelled at for decades. That's why I love one. Yeah, exactly. Because that's the kind of game that I play more often than anything mm-hmm. else. And like that that's like Shuhei Yoshida, and that's what like Shuhei Yoshida pushes and like before Sean Layden, Jack Trenton, uh, that's what like Jack Trenton was talking about that and then Sean Layden is now in his place that as the head of uh, Sony PlayStation of America. Mm-hmm. So like that that's a big goal for PlayStation is is our exclusives. We want fantastic, well done narrative driven games and we've talked about this on um our last episode um where where the during the dice awards or the dice summit too where sean Layden comes out and during his keynote he he talks about how like how nintendo is needed because of what they what differences and innovation they bring to the video game industry and like how xbox brought the accessibility because of the accessibility controller and then he references playstation to what their software brings which are their games and Mm -hmm. their narrative driven games and which is amazing which is fantastic and and that's amazing and i I really like i I, it's sad to see him go uh and see reggie fils leave nintendo but i really i look forward to seeing what uh doug bowser is going to be doing for nintendo of america yeah it should be interesting and uh the the best part about it is how playstation is going to go ahead and answer to this yeah you know because when um jack trenton left you know when he retired and then Sean Layden took his place. That was a very interesting because I'm like, ooh, Sean Layden. I don't know much about this guy. And here comes Sean. Like, and that was uh, that was like about about a year or two before the PS4 was announced. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like uh, Sean Layden comes out like every E3. I I'm like, oh Sean, like Sean Layden, you better have a T-shirt of some kind teasing me of something that I'm gonna get hyped for because he comes out wearing a Crash Bandicoot uh, t-shirt oh, sure. when he announced uh or the at the year before at a PSX he wore like a wipeout one before that announcement like he always like I love Sean Layden and that's like his own little like thing right you know um but yeah like I with Reggie fees am I leaving like I know I'm repeating myself and I'm rambling but really Reggie fees may really did impact a lot of our lives, people's lives, gamers' lives. Like, he was very important to Nintendo as a whole and to the video game industry as a whole. Mm-hmm. You know what? It's actually kind of sad. You know what? The last the last time he was, like, actually, like, on, like, a conference floor on awards, you know when it was? No, when? The Game Awards. Hmm. Him, Sean Layden, and Phil Spencer, the three heads of uh, Nintendo, Sony, uh, Nintendo PlayStation, Xbox of America all stood on the same stage floor and they pretty much said like we're here together even though we represent different competing brands we're all part of the video game industry and we all want each other to do well mm-hmm. i'm paraphrasing but that was the right. whole thing and i'm like wow like i'm, I'm i that kind of like that that's a little bit bittersweet i'm like wow that's kind of the the last like cause last yeah. time he was like out in public I'm not saying he wasn't out public but like out on a show floor like presenting something if that makes sense yeah you know actually this is like somewhat kind of related but not in the game i just saw this thing the other day and it really made me think it's like at the same concept uh-huh. where like there was a point in your life when you were in your childhood when you played with your friends outside for the very last time and you never knew it yeah yeah mm-hmm. and, I, and i and i was just like damn yeah like there was just one day where that was the last time that mm-hmm. you ever played together outside and you none of you even knew it yeah yeah and it's it's one of those things where it's just you know, that was the last time that, like, we saw him out in public, and now he's going home. And you know what? Good. I'm glad, man. Yeah. Like, he's, 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 he's had quite the run. I think he's earned it. 
Yeah, I, I definitely mean, agree. Obviously, I trust him to hand it off to somebody who he believes in. Yeah, and really, like, I don't. I personally don't know much about uh, uh, Doug Bowser, and if there's anyone uh, and if who know, who knows a lot about Doug Bowser or you know that kind of thing, please let us know in the comments. We always appreciate that. But yeah, um, Ridge Vizme, uh, we are sad to see you leave uh, Nintendo, but we wish you the best, and we look forward to seeing what. Nintendo has in store, and how PlayStation will be answering mm. to this new change in the video game industry. Yeah, should be like, but well, yeah, it's because like honestly, I mean, like there could be a lot of things that they do or or don't do because it's like who knows? It depends. I think it depends on what direction Nintendo goes in. No, oh, yeah, it's going to determine what their reaction will be. Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, I think right now PlayStation, PlayStation is sitting at a very in a very good spot right now. Mm -hmm. um, with how successful the PS4 is, and they have the you know the games that they're preparing for, Last of Us Part Two, Ghost of Tsushima, Days Gone, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Cyberpunk. Like, mm -hmm. Well, that's the third party, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like um, confirmed not to have loot boxes or a battle royale. Yeah. 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 No. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, but yeah, like I, I look forward to seeing what Reggie. Is going to be doing uh, next. I've only this is a very short uh, news news of the nation. There's only there wasn't a lot of news this. Uh, yeah, no, it's this surprising. Past week, um, pretty much. Uh, moving on. Next topic. Uh, and uh, Anthem uh, has gotten a day one patch. So mind you, this is kind of kind of irrelevant now because Anthem has already hit because this patch goes up on the official launch date of. Um, Anthem, which is on February 22nd, and um, pretty much what uh, it says that, so for people who uh, were able to play early on February 15th on the EA Origin Access, um, who for that, uh, there were load times were extremely long, they were about like 17 minutes, and um, there were some missions that wouldn't work, so uh, you couldn't actually progress. And uh, now with uh, this patch update, now the load times are smaller and um, the missions won't glitch, at least hopefully. That was one of the things that, were that they said that they were fixing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I mean, again, the, just a little small little tidbit there. Um, let's see. Uh, God, this is really not a lot. Yeah, just... Yeah, uh, the other thing that I do have is, um, I, we've, we've talked about this before, um, in Call of Duty Black Ops 4, there's a new update that's, uh, coming up in the new season, um, and pretty much what the update is, it's, uh, they're doing a lot of changes, they're gonna be changes to the Blackout map along to, uh, the current, the newest season that they're doing, along with a brand new, um, kind of like... It's a, it's a content update. It's a free update. It's called Operation Grand Heist. Uh, and it will offer content across all playable modes, which is multiplayer, blackout, and zombies. Uh, Blackout's newest location, Ghost Town, will feature two new areas, uh, including one inspired from the map spinoff uh, from Black Ops 2. And secondly, a new underground cavern inspired from the zombies map in, two, in Black Ops 2. The outrider, a female, uh, yeah, the outrider, a female specialist from Black Ops Three, is known for her stealth precision, using the sparrow to take out enemies, and she will be making her debut. And then a new mode for Blackout called Hot Pursuit will have three new vehicles: a muscle car, an SUV, and a PBR assault boat. Taps blue ribbon. Mm -hmm. That'd be dope. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Would be. Um, so, and you can go ahead and go to the uh, the Call of Duty website to go ahead and see the full update. Um, but the, the reason why I bring this up is that uh, Activision has now brought back loot boxes mm -hmm. in this update. And we've talked about loot boxes we, and, and on here and that kind of thing. But I, I do think I don't... Activision is not... Activision Blizzard is not in a good spot when it comes... Like, their, their stocks are, haven't really been rising. Mm -hmm. At least steadily. Like, how EA is where Apex Legends came out and just shot right up. Right. Activision's stocks have kind of been on this decline, and that's why, like we've talked about uh, on our another past episode, uh, is Activision uh, falling apart, mm -hmm. uh, where they're laying off tons of people, and uh, you know they hired a new CEO or a CEO or CFO, and 
with all of that. And now it, this game didn't have loot boxes and now they're adding it after the fact. The reviews have already been out. So the game has been reviewed very well. And now these loot boxes are back. And it's just, it's it's a $60 game at standard price. There's MSRP. a reason I don't own it. Like, I, I get you. But like, uh, it's just, you ha- it, like just to break this down. It's $60 for the standard game at standard pricing. Now, if there's a sale, awesome. But like, it's 60 bucks standard pricing. Yep. Then there's a uh, blackout pass or a, a black ops pass. Uh, which is the season pass, fifty bucks. So that's one ten for just that. That gives you all the content. Not, a, but the problem is that the Black Ops pass doesn't just give it to you. So they give you like new maps, but then the, they give you the opportunity. They give you the oppor- you the it. ability to open these things, but you still have to grind out and do the, uh, do like challenges and stuff. Then they have the microtransactions, which are all of the cosmetics, so the, like the little uh, reticle that we've talked about that's like a dollar, or any of the challenges that you can just zoom through if you buy them. So like, you're spending at least a hundred, at least a hundred dollars to just try to get everything, and you won't get everything even then. Because you have all the cosmetics and all mm-hmm. the loot. Now they have loot boxes in it. And I just... Well, it's like, the thing that doesn't make sense for me is, like, the fact that they got rid of them and are bringing them back, despite the fact that they know people don't like them. I don't know what they think is going to happen. People just are just not going to do it. Like, loot ball, like, because of Battlefront 2, like, because of EA... Like, even in, in, in Anthem, like, EA... You know, in retrospect, it's almost great that those games sucked. Mm-hmm. Because it drew attention to how shitty loot boxes are. Yeah. And, like, basically made it a no-no in the gaming industry. Because well, up until then, it wasn't really a big thing. There wasn't really... You know, that wasn't a model that was really used. Well, it's kind of like... Well, the video game industry does this a lot where, like, there's a new fad. So, like, for instance, Overwatch comes out. And that's kind of what started... Like, we've had loot boxes before in tons of different games. But Overwatch is kind of what brought it to the mainstream forefront. Right. Um, so it yeah. was an online... Yeah, game. yeah, and then like tons of people were playing it. And yeah. People love people love Blizzard, and it's a hero shooter. And at the time, hero shooters were a big thing. Mm-hmm. So the loot boxes come out. So then, because of Overwatch, you then had you know games like Star Wars Battlefront Two. And for me, what just pissed me off was uh, Shadow of uh, Sh- Middle Earth Shadow of War had loot boxes. And yeah, I'm like, but you could still play the game with I. Oh I, yeah, I, but like it's just, but it's one of those things. Why even have this yeah. in the game? Where you can you can play it's, it's just it's a single player game. This doesn't impact right, yeah, like, anything. I, I wouldn't even touch a loot box. Like why would I need one? Mm-hmm. And like mind you, like WB WB was smart enough, mind you, they pretty much made their money from it because about about a, a little about six months to almost a year after the game came out, they made a definitive edition where you get everything. Oh, and we got we did a patch so we got rid of all the loot boxes. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, yay, I'm glad. But it was after the fact that the game sure. has been out for so long. It has that bad like bad juju around it mm. so it's like again i love shadow of war and i and i i said this before, i've said before that shadow of war is such a fun game but what made me mad and why uh it wasn't part of my game of the year like list when i was kind of thinking about, okay what are what are the best games of 2017 it wasn't that because of that if they if, because that aspect was kind of it was so it's so important to the end game you can't actually beat the game without these like loot box parts because there's a final ending in the game hmm. of Shadow of War, and you can't. It's hard, it's harder to get to it without buying these loot boxes of orcs and stuff. Sure. So it was just one of those things where I'm just like, Ugh. and like, look, I, it sucks, but really the bubble burst, and I knew it was going to happen. Everyone was seeing that it was going to happen, and really. I'm glad because now, like, people are trying to stay away from that. <sighs> I don't like loot box. Uh, it's hard because, like, free to play games have loot boxes. Like, Apex Legends has loot boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I would even want to, but I don't know if I want to give them a pass. Like, I get why people say, oh, if it's in a free to play game, fine, whatever. It's all cosmetic and it doesn't matter. And I, I can see why that gives it a pass. And, like, it's all cosmetic, it doesn't affect the gameplay. So that's good. And that's the way you want to do loot boxes. 
I personally don't even like the cons. I, I personally don't even like doing that. I'd rather be able to go, I want this thing. Let me buy it. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I have fallen prey to my own loot, you know, loot boxes before on, on my phone. I play a little mobile game called Power Rangers Legacy Wars. It's a, it's a very fun fighting game. And doesn't feel like it's it's predatory where like in order to play you have to buy these things. Sure. You could play through the game forever and you if you lose you go down in ranks. If you win, you go up in ranks. But you can continue fighting against people forever. It's just if you, you can spend real life money to get better rangers. Where you or you if you played long it'll take you longer to get those like legendary rangers who doesn't who that do more damage and and can have better powers and specials and stuff like that and i and i have spent money on those but for me when i would it was one of those like oh you are guaranteed to get this mm -hmm. this number and then like it is for a discounted price and the more you spend it will like the price goes up a little bit like and that made sense sure so yeah i mean i mean like yeah i i i think that loot boxes should only be used in so far as like they're not necessary it's an addition mm -hmm. you know it shouldn't give you an advantage over someone who doesn't have it because you have extra money to spend and they don't if mm -hmm. you per i mean even in a free game i don't yeah. care if the game is free it should never be pay to win it no be, i agree it, it, it can be it could be pay to win and it could be paid to play in style mm -hmm. but not pay to win no i get you and like, like to, to just to revert, like there are, I don't know if I'm contradicting myself or not, but just using the example that I said before, one of the reasons why I liked Power Rangers Legacy Wars is that I would be using some of those rangers, like the legendary ranger that sure. I would get, I would lose to guys who are get playing common versions of other rangers, where like you can just get them by playing. Sure. So I would lose to people who... It's about the balance that you strike between having like offering something for a true monetary value offering something that can be gained through skill and progression mm -hmm. and you want to have a good if you're going to have well you need to have one yeah and you can have both but you you should like it's it should never be the case like me as a gamer i don't think it should ever be the case where you either have to like where you essentially have to pay in order to have a chance at being better mm -hmm. or have a chance at winning or have a chance at getting something that you couldn't just outright, you know, having a chance buying something outright and just getting that thing is one thing. Yeah. But like paying for the opportunity to get something where you pay real money after already having bought the game mm -hmm. to possibly get something that you want is that's, that's just a scam. No, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And again, that's what happened with Star with uh, Battlefront Two. And EA was like, "Oh, we're, we're going to use our ult our ultimate team system that we use in Madden and FIFA because that's exactly what it is. Is that you spend real life money, you get better players, and blah blah mm -hmm. blah. It's a pay to win game. Yeah. And even now, people are getting smart. You know, even Madden and FIFA players are going, "No, we don't want that anymore." But again, it, it's it's. The bubble has burst. I'm glad that it has happened, but it's just like, I don't know why you are trying to put loot boxes into a game that people are buying for. And, you're like, you're seeing, like, you know, the other the other side. Like, I would probably say Activision and EA are, like, the, the, they, they compete against each other for the same type of people. Here's EA, who I would, like, out, they outright are, like... We care about our bottom line. It's like it's very obvious. Oh yeah, like they don't hide it. And like here's Apex Legends, people are praising it and loving the game. Got 25 million players within a day, mm -hmm. faster than Fortnite. Like Fort Fortnite's gonna go just go on the way of old Yeller. Mm hmm. Just it's you know. it's Apex Legends is the new shiny Apex. Like, and again, like, it's just, it, that's what it is. And we'll see how Epic Games will respond to it, but, like... Well, see, the thing is, for me, is, like, I was never a fan of Fortnite to begin with. No, I agree. Me so, either. it's, like, I don't really know what they would even be able to do to Fortnite to... Not to say that it couldn't, like, and that's... Because there's obviously still people who play it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, all the entire... If you invested a bunch of... If you're good at that, and that's, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's, like, they really couldn't change it in any way that wouldn't make it a different game yeah. to make me want to play. Yeah, yep. 
So I don't know, but it like again, Apex Legends is the new. It's the new hotness. It's the new shiny. Yeah. You know. So, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have for news topics. It's been it's been it's been a very light week. Um. So yeah, but. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the main topic. Now, um, last time we talked, we talked about, uh, how, um, Sean Layden was, had a lot of interviews, um, last week before, and, um, people were going, like, why did you, like, he finally has responded to why, uh, PlayStation will not be at E3 2019, at E3 2019, is because they, they, uh, it's it's too it's kind of like one of those old things where it's like yeah. it it's it takes too much it's too short of a time for retailers to kind of figure out how they want to set up their holidays, where PlayStation has now created this thing called Destination PlayStation, which will be at the end of February, which we're really close to that, and that like there's going to be something happening there now. My when they when Sony announced that they were not going to be at E3 2019, I'm like they have to have something big planned. There must be something. There's got to be a big reason of why they left E3, mm-hmm. and it's because it has to be because they're about to announce the PS5. We're about what five to six years through this console life cycle, mm-hmm. and that's about the normal time. It's going to be this year or next year. It, yeah, and that's what I mean of the release. I think that they're, they're like this destination PlayStation. I honestly, think they're going to be. Announce like I think they're going to be doing kind of what they did. I really hope they do a really weird commercial for it. <laughs> like they always do. Yeah, yeah. Um, Just get like, uh, I'm pretty sure that they had uh, David Lynch direct one of their commercials. Oh. oh, yeah, that's right. The PS2, the third place commercials, they were like, they, they like Japan got David Lynch involved because they felt that because he was the only one who could like bring that weird. He, he did, like, the Dune movie. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, that kind of, like, weird, like, visual stuff. Yeah. And they brought him in to do that third place PS2 ad campaign. Yeah. So, what I wanted to kind of bring up, this is kind of, like, a little bit more of a, of a, a fun topic, but I wanted to kind of bring up, uh, too, uh, what we're predicting what the PS5 will be. Well, I already but, said that last time. You did? Yeah. What I think it remember that like Mandala effect thing? Oh, that well, well what it, what it might look like. I, I get, but I'm, 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 you, I'm talking about. Oh like, yeah. Oh, we'll go into it. I'm just saying for those of you in the last episode, like, and this is a real thing that happened to me. Like, I saw a commercial on my news feed like a year or two ago mm-hmm. for the PlayStation Five. Like full on. Like I saw what it looked like. Mm-hmm. It was like an official Sony commercial for the PlayStation Five, and I, like a dumbass, didn't share it. And I went and tried to find it again immediately to try to share it, and I couldn't find it again. So I don't know what happened, and obviously nothing's been announced, but I know for a fact I saw it. And yeah. I don't know I don't know how else to explain it. So uh, what I want to do is that I want to, one, predict what PlayStation had, like what we think PlayStation will be, so we're going to be predicting, so going like, okay, this is what PlayStation's going to do. Sure. And then... Also, what we ourselves would want okay. out of this system. Right. Uh, so, uh, Blaze, why don't you uh, begin? So, predicting what what do you think that PlayStation will be doing to the PS Five? Like, what, like we're talking about specifics. So, we're talking about like specs. Well, I'll right. just I'll run down what I remember seeing and what I think is going to be out. Okay, we'll go ahead then. And so, I think it's going to be a very shiny, rounded um, apparatus. So, mm-hmm. it's going to be. It actually almost looked akin to the new K model of the PS3 in shape. Okay. So where it's like a rounded ellipse. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just flat. Like, Are you talking about like the Super Slim? The Super Slim version? The one with the top open. Yeah, the top loader one. Yeah, that's a Super Slim. All right, that. So that it'll be bigger than that, but it's that kind of shape. Okay. Okay. And there's no buttons. Okay. It's going to be all blue lit touch activated um, buttons that are underneath a co- underneath this glass covering. Okay. That goes around it, and like that's how you open it and activate power. And there's probably there's it looked like there was a few other functions. Uh huh. And uh, we'll still have a disc tray built mm-hmm. in like it is now, but even less noticeable. Okay. Um, and obviously it's going to have Bluetooth. And all the capabilities that the PS4 has. And um, 
outside of that, I think I, what I'm curious about is if they're going to make a new Dual Shock. Because I feel like they could easily stick with the Dual Shock for. If the, if the, but I don't know. I feel like they're going to change it. Like I feel like it's going to be more I rounded th- to try to match the aesthetic. I think I think the Dual Shock Four. Like everyone, when they announced the Dual Shock Four, that is even I agree. That is the best PlayStation controller. Oh yeah, well it, it's the newest one. And- but no 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 no. But like it feels the best because like if the thing is that like the one of the problems with like the especially the L two and. Uh, R2 and L2 triggers, like, on the PS3, mm-hmm. is that they were round, and they they, they they didn't even... They felt like buttons. The one were, thing like, I think could be altered on the P, on the Dual, on the DualShock 4 is the fact that there is... Unlike, let's say, the Xbox One or the 360, where, like, the triggers were inlaid, mm-hmm. these ones are exposed. Yeah. So you could set your controller down and accidentally... Like fire your gun or something. Yeah. There's like it's like if you set it flat, fine. But any angle, it'll push it in. They should like extend out like a plastic. Oh, I get you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that you can set it down without that happening. Without the triggers actually going. Right, because yeah. that could end up real like at a pivotal moment when you need to set like that could end up screwing something up entirely. Mm-hmm. You know, or like just resting it and you accidentally press something that wouldn't happen if they just kind of extended it out a little bit. And so that it just goes into the controller. Yeah. As opposed, and it would be harder to get dirty because it wouldn't be exposed. I get you. Yeah. Um, I think they could also um, expound upon like the speaker in it. Get a yeah. Like, get get a little bit more going on with that. Like not that it's bad. I'm just like, and I don't I don't even know really what you could do, but I like maybe a better speak. Like just there's something I feel there's more there. There's a, that idea is cool for mm-hmm. immersion, and I feel like not enough is done with it. It's it's just it's specific games, and it's also it's faster and easier to just ignore it for when it comes to developing. Like, oh, I'm sure. And then like I mean, and the only game I even I've ever played where you use the motion feature is Last of Us to shake your flashlight. Uh, for me, it was uh, in. Outside of uh, Detroit Become Human, where or was it? no? I'm sorry, it was uh, Until Dawn. We have to hold it in place and keep the the light bar inside of the the outline. Hmm. Um, it was the one. My favorite one was in Infamous Second Son. There are like little side quests, little side missions where you have to tag a wall. Hmm. So what you do is you turn your controller sideways. So you're playing like this, hmm. and but instead of doing like this, you turn it sideways. So you hold it like this. And the R two up here is like you're. It's pretty much as if you're playing a, a spraying. And uh, one of my favorite, my, one of my favorite touchpad in near um, Automata. If you like rub the touchpad with your thumb, mm-hmm. you'll like pet your little um, like robot companion. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's the only feature I've seen where like rubbing the touchpad actually does something. Yeah. And there's a bunch of other games that do use it. I'm um, just curious to see if they're going to try to go more into the motion control, like idea or like try to expound upon it the ability for it to occur it's 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 hard because this is a fantastic controller and how it's implemented even with their psvr oh yeah like i don't know if you would want to change much i think honestly if you do it's just tiny little tweaks. maybe like aesthetic changes i would probably like kind of like what xbox did to the like xbox round it off a little I, like I'm, in, like i'm I, i'm just saying the main thing is like in oh i agree triggers. oh i agree should be inlaid they're sticking out and there's there's a much higher probability that you could make a mistake just setting it down or whatever than there would be without it. Like, the only thing you may, you're you adding maybe, like, a gram of weight. It's not, And then you could remove it somewhere else. You know, I'm, I'm sure that they could find a way. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Uh, that, But I think what they would do with the controller, with the DualShock 4 or the DualShock 5, uh, it, I think, honestly, the best thing to do with the DualShock 5 is really just kind of keep it to the... Keep the the feel like the the look like pretty much make it almost similar to the DualShock Four because that yeah. is honestly the best PlayStation like keep controller. Keep it as close as you can, but make some make some yeah like make some changes. Make some maybe make, add some paddles or like the are you talking about like the are you talking about like those like, like the scuff controller? Oh, okay, yeah. But like or just like you could have a mod, you could have a um a slightly moddable controller. So maybe it would be something like you know how there's different types of controllers, yeah, of like course. different style, styles mm-hmm, and colors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, like well with the DualShock, they have a bunch of different colors. They're all pretty much the same outside of the scuff. 
Yeah. Which is like the fucking answer to... It's their version of... Uh, it's the, it's the third part. It's a yeah. third party made elite controller. I think that maybe having the ability to swap parts of your controller... Oh, you could buy... Like, make a magnetic... And you could maybe buy different colored buttons, or you could get different face plates for it. Or you know, no, I wouldn't agree with that because I'm also because I have to I have to think of like as a gamer, yes, oh I would love that. But I also have to think about this as just like you know Timmy over here wants to play Call of Duty. I'm not saying and, they all. I mean they they could have a model like that. Like, I, like a second controller that would be made in house instead of a third party. Yeah, yeah but like I, if if we're talking about like, do you think they're gonna keep the DualShock Four? For the PS5, because I don't think so. I no, they'll, like make, they'll make a new controller. They'll make a new controller, but I think the look of it will be very similar. I think they're going to do what they did with the, like how what Xbox did from the 360 to the Xbox One, where it's just the Xbox. Batter. No, it, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. The Xbox One controller is just a sleeker version of the 360 controller. I don't think so. I think the the, the 360 controller is slimmer than the Xbox One controller. The Xbox One controller is about this thick. 360 is like down here. I personally like the 360 controller over the Xbox One controller. They're the two similar to me. They're far too similar for me to even like see a difference. Um, you can't tell me you don't think that it's bigger in your hands to hold an Xbox One controller than no, 360. Like I don't feel a difference between. In the, the two. comments below, you tell us. <laughs> I don't like. Go ahead. I personally believe that the 360 controller was far sleeker. Than the Xbox One controller. I, for me, I don't see a don't difference. Don't even get me started on the Xbox controller. Oh, hey man, I love Duke. I love that stuff. That is the worst controller. I love it. It is so no, big. I love it. Barely, I, have, I like, love it. It was huge. I have big, stupid hands. Well, so it's my I have favorite. small, smart hands, and I need a different type of controller. <laughs> You're a twig. I could break you over my knee if I wanted to. So doesn't mean I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Um, but back on point, I think the, so for the controller, I believe that it would just be a, a small change when it comes to the look, but I think they'll just add a few different features. And they're obviously going to have to have like full 4k optimization. That's just going to be a standard. Oh feature. yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, think to be able to compete with the Xbox one X, it's like not no brainer. Well, mind you, we don't know what the, pro what project Scarlet will be. And we also don't even know if 4k is, I mean like there's 8k stuff coming out now. It's like after a certain point, you won't even know a difference. You well, won't be able to like distinguish like, you can, we don't see in 128 frames a second. And, like, eventually, there'll be, like, like you can only get something to look so, like, realistic before you don't notice anything above that. No, I get you. Like, there's only so much our, our brains can even, like, interpret. Well, with AK, that's far too new of technology for that to be a thing. Uh, for well, I'm just saying, on the commercial market. down the line. I think they're gonna. It would be like a. It would be a PS5 Pro or whatever they would call it. But it would be a mid. It would be mid cycle upgrade. The PS5s. Whatever. <laughs> like or yeah or the PS5 Slim. <laughs> I really hope they get more creative with their naming conventions. Nah, I get you. Um, but like for when it comes, yes, I will definitely have to say whatever. Whatever the next, whatever the PS5 will be, it has to do 4K. Whether yeah, it's whether, new, whether it's, I, honestly, what the, what it should do, it should be at least um, up res 4K. So it's that sure. four, uh, 1440 uh, yeah, resolution. 1440p, yeah. 1440p. Um, Backwards compatibility. That we've already talked. We have already talked that about. Happen. And really, if it doesn't. They're fools. They're fools. Oh, I agree. They don't do it. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. Because that's like the main thing. That's like the thing that Xbox has over them, mm -hmm. and it's a big thing. It's a big deal. Uh, like, I, especially given like all, like you know the huge research. I mean, like retro gaming never really died. Because by definition, as a game becomes old enough, it'll become retro game. But it's be I think that the resurgence in like seeing arcades come mm -hmm. back, arcade yeah. bars, like the idea, like the social consciousness is definitely like nostalgia is the currency of the realm. Is yeah, what I like to say, I agree. And it's basically they like they have to know that. There's a reason they put out the PlayStation Classic. Mm -hmm. And and it's like they like they just if they if they simply just yeah if they make one that plays PS one and PS two games and PS three, 
They, that would be incredible. They, that would be like that would be our that would that would be something I would want. This is what I predict though. I can see the at p- least PS3 and PS2. N- Here's the thing: the reason why the PS4 can't do PS3 is because of the architecture. The way, like, really, PlayStation screwed themselves out of that mm. because they wanted to be like, oh, we want to use like, like, uh, what was it? I think it was like uh, cell, uh, like, like single cell or multi cell, dual cell uh, processors. Like, the all of the tech they put into the PS3 was so advanced, it made it harder for third parties to develop on right. it. Where the 360 was a very was a very cheap. It was all, like all PC parts and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. like it like Falcon Drive mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah. Like if you look at Skyrim, like uh, Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim, like Elder Scrolls Five uh, uh, Skyrim works great on the 360. Mm-hmm. And, I have it on 360. And but mind you, it's a cheaper system where the PS3 has way more power in it. But Skyrim like glitch when it first came out, it was glitching and it was it was bad. Mm-hmm. It was not good. It took a long time for the, all of those patches to get fixed yeah so like i don't see it going back to ps3 i want ps2 and i think that's I what PS2 i think that's what ps2 that's what playstation now is into play and but i do agree i will have to say they need to fix their their pricing on that mm. um because it's far too expensive what is playstation now oh sure it's like i believe it's like 30 bucks for three months or higher than that it's so like 10 bucks a month yeah, but I no, I think it's higher than that. Um, let me, uh, let me go ahead and see. Uh, just gonna go ahead and do this live. Fuck it, we're doing it live. We're doing it. We're doing it. Um. Okay. Uh, PlayStation now subscription costs twenty bucks per month. A hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, see. No, mm-hmm. thanks. New subscribers get their first month for 10 bucks, and then they offer a one-year subscription priced at uh, 100 bucks. Per So that's really... All, those are your choices. So it's 20 Do bucks. Do they have, like, retro games on there and stuff? Well, or? yeah. So, like, you get access... I just have not used PlayStation. PlayStation now, so. now gives you access to uh, PS3 and PS4 games. Well, I want PS2. That's what I. That's yeah, what I truly I, want. I, I know because PS2 is like one of the best systems ever made, and it, to this day is like the highest selling console. Oh, I get you. I mean, they like the PS2 games they have are those uh, PS2 to PS4 digital games they have. It's a small library, but mm-hmm. those are PS2 games that are ported to the PS4. I, I just think I just think that I I feel like I ha- I know that they got enough intelligence working at Sony to make it happen, if they wanted to. It. It, it, for at least PS2. I know they could do that. Well, it's surprising because, like, even uh, all of the PS3s can play PS1 games. All of them. Every single one. Huh. The only... But, yeah, only the one, only the original the fat one. Boy, only the Fat Boy, and it's the orig- the very first one, 60 gig, yep. and the 80 gig second model that could be backwards compatible. After that, and yep. the reason why they stopped that is because of the flashing red light of death, so it would... Bre- it would Pretty much have the same you mean problem. The yellow light, yellow light. Yeah, yeah. it's the it's it's. A it was the ring. red ring of the PS3. Yes, yeah. exactly. So that's why you've got the slim and the super slim, right? Cheaper pricing, uh, better um, ventilation, so mm-hmm. it wouldn't overheat itself. But I, the thing is, they need to do backwards compatibility. And we've even uh, talked about this, where uh, there's a patent that was published on January 31st of this year of backwards compatibility to at least the PS4. Yeah. Oh and yeah, they have. They to. have they to do have to. at least to the PS4. Yeah, minimum. Otherwise, no one's gonna buy it. Or I mean, and it, well, they, they, they will buy it, but they're they're gonna lose sales because like no one's gonna give up their entire library You're, you just w- to move on to a new system. It's honestly surprising of because people will buy the it's 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 what third party games are gonna be coming to these new systems mm-hmm. along with pricing. Yeah. Um. Which, but I, I for one can tell you that if it's not backwards compatible, I wouldn't buy one right away because I'm not gonna just get. I would. I mean, I'll keep my PS4 even if I do get a PS5. But it's like, but then I if if I if the PS5, you know, if it did work, and I could transfer all my stuff to it, mm-hmm. then I would definitely you know upgrade completely to a PS5. But given the huge, there's years worth of a, like the PS4 libraries humongous mm-hmm. just because it because it's been so long mm-hmm. since the last since since the last generation began yeah 
And because of that, like, they would be fools if they didn't have backwards compatibility. Like, complete PS4. No, it, it's honestly surprising. Like, when uh, I, w- I want to go on to, like, start talking about Granted, specs. if a game was digital, it shouldn't matter. Well, I, I want to, like, I, I, want the, I want to get on to specs, but I do want to say at this point is um, with. Backwards compatibility, it's surprising because there have been studies done where only like 10 to 15% tops of gamers would actually play their like past games, like past gen games. Sure. But then if you look at when Xbox, uh, when they announced we're doing backwards compatibility to the 360, yep. and I believe it was 2016, and then in 2017 they said now we're going to do backwards compatibility to the original Xbox. Like that was a big deal. Oh, yeah. That was like people were rejoicing and people bought systems because of that uh, outside of like normal it's stuff. It's cheaper. It's that's one thing. It's like it, it's far cheaper to buy like a 360 game than it is any Xbox One game worth buying. Well, it, because well also there are games that are out, like mind you they 360 games are not being made anymore. Right. Exactly. Like, what exists exists. Like currently. Yeah. So like but like it's just you don't lose your library. Right. That's 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 the whole thing. Right. You don't lose like, your library. Like, like, yeah, so like for people who you know, that that's a whole big thing because when like the Xbox One and PS4 came out, they both said no, we did not do backwards compatibility. Um, but now you have Xbox doing Game Pass and this thing. Honestly, PlayStation needs to really fix the pricing of PlayStation now, so that way they can get more people to come onto it. Not saying that people don't play it because people do, but like it, it's far too expensive, even for me. And they got to do backwards compatibility to the PS4. They have to. Mm-hmm. That like and PS2 would be a huge bonus. In my I opinion. think that would be down the line. Oh yeah, I'm just saying. Ultimately, having the ability yeah. to yes. do it. Yeah, but let's 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 move on. I want to. I don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole because we got there's other stuff that we got to talk about for what this system sure. would have. So uh, spec wise, uh, what do we? What do you think specs? Well, I mean, like, like I said, 4K, like ability upscaling mm-hmm. that it would have to have. I mean, I, I don't know exact hardware because I don't know what a PS4's hardware is, like. Um, like, I mean, cause I, I could, if we were talking to PC about PC, I could definitely, I could tell you graphics cards I'd want in it and stuff, but it's going to mm-hmm. have to, it's going to have to have at least minimum like 60 frames per second, like easily with anything that it plays. Um, standard, I mean, almost, I want to say standard two terabyte probably if, well, and with at a, least with one, a, yeah, at least one with a two option, if not more, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. The ability to add more memory internally easily would be nice because as opposed to having to have like like on mine where I have an external hard drive plugged in, there's always the chance that something could go wrong. They could no, the, hear me out. Okay. So you have your internal hard drive that it comes with, right? Mm-hmm. You know how with the uh, 360s, you could pull out the hard drive and put another one in. Oh, you're talking about. In house made, yeah, terabytes, yeah. Oh, no, because what you could do is you could start, you could have a terabyte standard, and you literally could have just like one or two, like, like, like maybe a secondary empty slot for a second hard drive that doesn't do anything unless you it wouldn't and it would be within the system. You pop something open and you could purchase and internally put it in there so there wouldn't be any risk of a corruption. Because you're not using literally a USB cord where it eventually can go to crap. So first and foremost, the very first PS4, that was actually how you could add put more memory on. It was internally. Actually, you couldn't do it externally. It was not possible. Right, right. But I, th- I don't think that's not. I don't think. I'm that's, just saying, making ease of access to do it. Would be I good. get you, but he, I'd see two problems with that. One is cost efficiency, where they would pretty much have to put one. They would be have to go ahead and make a spot that something. Honestly, I don't Or at least make the one it does come with removable and replaceable. But would you least. still make it would you still make it like just a regular standard hard drive that I could go to a best no, buy? No, it would it would be there it So would, you would want it to be It would be made by Sony. That's another problem then. Because then we're looking at the Well Vita. Seagate makes the ones that exist now. But then we're looking at a Vita problem then. The the problem with the Vita is that the Vita the reason why the Vita died, or one of the reasons why the Vita died, is because their memory cards were, they were not micro SD cards. They were in-house Vita I'd be only. fine with, with third-party availability then. I mean, I, I just want to be able to swap out the hard drive internally easily. 
That that is essentially like I think would be a good feature. I I, I I get that, and I think the way that it was done on the PS4, like the very first PS4, like it was how like that's why I didn't do it. I didn't do it at all. I just started swapping out games, and then when they said, "Oh yeah, you can just buy an external hard drive and do it," I'm like, "Sweet, I'll just do that." Right. I've I've never had a problem with that. But neither I have I. But the the potential. I, is I much get higher. you, but like, I don't. You never have to worry about it getting unplugged or anything like that. I, I get you, but like now, but again, we're looking at cost efficiency also, and sure. I think that's that. Like if like in like I've in in the past when it comes to PlayStation making something in house, mm. it doesn't become cost efficient. Mm. It doesn't. Mm. I don't see a, like I get where you're coming from, but I don't. I don't. I honestly, I think really like I, I think you should have the ability to do internal or external if you want. Okay. And then, like, so that way... You know, oh, you know what I just thought about? What? Like, outside of that, one thing that I literally... And I can't believe that... You, and I know why, but I still can't believe... Like, I want to be able to burn music to the system. Because you, you, I could do that on my 360. You could do that on the PS3, too. Yeah, well, you know what? Neither of those are relevant anymore. Yeah, I know. And the only reason that they don't have them on modern ones is because they want you to pay for Spotify and crap. Well, it's, it's streaming. It's streaming now. Right, but I don't care. That's I that's not what I want. I don't want to have to use my internet every time I would want to listen to music or an external device. I I had to download an app to even play a CD on my PS4. It didn't even read CDs unless you download the media app, which is ridiculous. The fact that it can it can play a Blu-ray disc and a game, but it can't read a CD without an extra app. That's ridiculous. I've never experienced that, so... Have you ever played a CD on your PS4? Yeah. Yeah, I had to download an app, or I wouldn't play a CD. And I'll, I might have downloaded it, and I don't remember a song. Yeah, all I'm saying is, is like I think the ability to rip or, or burn music to the system's internal memory for playback would be awesome. But what games use that now? There's not no, 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 it wouldn't be for the game. It would just be my own personal music that I could burn to the system so that I could play it back over a game, or just... As a music system, but by I, I, yeah, I, I guess because you're gonna. Play I don't Spot- want to be forced to use Spotify because I have to pay for that, and I don't want to. That's the point. Like the, the only reason they got rid of it is so that you would have to pay more. That is the only reason. They, they, there's no excuse you or anybody else can give me because it already has been done. I know. And they took it away because then it forces you to. No doubt, they're partnered up in some form or fashion. With someone like Spotify, where they know that they're going to end up making money off of the money that's made to be able to use that feature, because and you can't use YouTube or anything at the you can't it's like like that's the only app other than Pandora where you can use it simultaneously with a game. And Pandora, you're not really picking your music. It's you're you're picking a station. I pick. I want to be able to burn a playlist of my own creation onto the system and be able to play it back. And I do not think that is outrageous to ask. You're not. Like, I agree. Because... Uh, like, that's me personally. Because uh, I... When look, I'm playing a fighting game, I want to play my own soundtrack. I, look, for me, especially when I'm, like, grinding for trophies... Right, if you are if you beat the game and you don't give a shit about the story anymore, bla- I want to blast some tunes without having to use an extra device because it's not the same. It's not the same as it coming through... I, I, you know? I get you. I get you. Look, I agree because when I'm grinding out for trophies, looking for collectibles, or you got to do this thing in a game, and in order to get this trophy, you got to do you got to do this thing. Like a tedious or a monotonous task. Yeah, it's a task. monotonous task. Like, I get it because I go ahead and, like, I have my phone sitting in front of me, and I throw on whether it's a podcast or music on a yeah. playlist that I have on YouTube or what, or on uh, music that I download doesn't matter i still play that i understand where you're coming from but it, i can see that and i do agree but streaming is becoming the the new thing and again i'm i'm, I'm being devil's advocate well and i and i get it because i know i know i'm not i'm not i'm not like you know i i understand like that like streaming is like the way that things are right now mm-hmm. and the way that they're going and you could still have that. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is I also want the option to burn to the system. I get you. I get you. That I know they can do it. I know they can. I get you. Um, but I actually uh, got the specs for the uh, PS4. Um, and, the, and then we can kind of talk about um, 
what they could change. So the CPU uses uh, it's uh, the number of cores uh, or threads they use is eight. Uh, the frequency speculated to be running a base speed of one point uh, one point six one point six gigahertz on a two point seven five gigahertz uh, uh, capable chip. Um, this the shared L two cache is two by two megabytes. Uh, the manufacturing process is uh, twenty eight nm I, I'm millimeters. Sorry. N N oh, okay. N oh, and nanometers. Yeah, uh, custom CPU with background processing for recording gameplay. Their GPU is a AMD next generation uh, Radeon uh, based graphics engine. Well, that's the first thing they got to get on the Nvidia train. Um, there it's eight GPU cores with eight hundred. Uh, their GPU clock is eight hundred megahertz. Uh, the memory or the RAM, this is kind of like the RAM, the memory is 8 gigabytes of, of uh, GDDR5, uh, frequency of 5500 5, megahertz, system memory bus is 256-bit, uh, system memory bandwidth is uh, seven, uh, 176 uh, gig, uh, gigabits per second. Uh, and then uh, you have the uh, storage size, which uh, I'm getting this from uh, IGN, this was the when they announced the PS4. Excuse me. 500 gigabytes of memory, uh, and the uh, hard drive was uh, removable. External dimensions, so on and so forth. Uh, they have blue, uh, DVD and Blu-ray reader. Um, they should have USB 3.0. This one does too. I'm just saying. No, like that. that's the norm. That's just the I'm norm. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, they use HDMI, HDMI ports. Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, so really the kind of the big thing is that it uh, the, the uh, RAM... Or the the memory processor is uh, DD, uh, eight gigabytes of DDR5, um, and then the GPU it, GPU is AMD next generation uh, Radeon. Uh, Radeon. I think that they should get an Nvidia. Uh, and because yeah. Nvidia definitely is like way more powerful cards. The re than... it is more powerful. Radeon's not bad. You know, like ATI, yeah, it's not bad. But I like I've always been the Nvidia. reason. The reason why they did that is for this is all cost. Oh, I know why. Yeah. So I'm not saying put a Titan in there, but or maybe maybe you should. Oh, uh, th this is the one thing I definitely would say. Whatever it is, it has to be a. Uh, a I, I don't know what the equivalent to. Uh, to AMD, but it's the uh, 1080. The 1080. Yeah, the 1080 Titan by Nvidia. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I mean, I don't know what AMD's answer to that. But is. it's 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 the similar version of that. Okay. Um, it like I would definitely go with like at, like maybe 1070, but probably 1080. So mm -hmm. that way you're right on point where everything is right now. Mm -hmm. Um, it ha I would say pretty much the way you want to build it is you want to build your PS5 pretty much like your Pro, but better. Yeah, it's almost like building a PC. Like that's you essentially want to just pimp it out as much as possible while maintaining like a three hundred four to four hundred dollar. Well, the price that has been speculated has been four hundred to five hundred, and honestly, if they shoot for the four hundred, that would be the best. Oh yeah, well because the the X is five hundred. Mm. Like well, new. also, well, also, the Xbox One when it first came out was five hundred with the camera yeah. that no one wanted. Right. So. That they have to, sh I honestly, they have to shoot for that 400. They cannot, I, or at I, least 450 or something. I mean, yeah, the 400 price point, I think, would be like what would give them the edge, yeah, against anything that Xbox would potentially put out. It, and then, it, when it comes, if both of them are because what really would re there were multiple reasons why the Xbox One just tripped all over itself. At the get go, it was their own uh, reveal event where it was TV, TV, uh, TV, TV, sports, 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 games, sports, 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 TV, 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 and they didn't really focus on games, which the people who watching your reveal event are gamers, yeah, the people yeah. who are going to be buying your stuff. Day the only one. people that the only people buying that for like sports and stuff are the people buying it like secondhand from a GameStop because that's what they want to use it for. It's yeah, not, or not when, what it's an intention. Should or be. they'll buy it, you know, two to three years after it's out. Because, right. When hey, I need cheap. I need a good Blu-ray player. Right. You know, and it also plays games if I feel like it. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So like. The reveal event was just a mess. Uh, their DRM policy, all that kind of stuff, mind you, was ahead of their time. But that was a problem back in 2013. Um, then the pricing, where they were like, like, good idea. I love that. Ca that camera was a cool idea. Oh, yeah. But, like, you you had to get it. You had to buy it. Yeah, with, no. And that was such a 
bad decision on them. Mm -hmm. And then you like, even though surprisingly, places. I remember when they were like teasing and not, not having a disc tray. Yep. Like mm -hmm. where it was gonna be all digital, and be like, yeah, no one's gonna buy your shit. <laughs> yeah, no, one, no. no one's buying a strictly snow because that means that there's no way they don't have any real control over any of the things that they have on there. Mm -hmm. you could easily get taken away, mm -hmm. or and there's nothing you could do about it. You still like people in like pe like even though even today, do, people are buying digital games far more than they were back in 2013. That's true, but. There are still people like, like me. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a soda. Yeah, um, you already have one. I uh, no, fine. You, you give me another soda. H2O. You concierge. Hey, you know what, dude? What? Hydrate. Uh, that's going to that's gonna dry you up over there. Uh, well, good to know. That's a sodium. Yay! Um, but, like, having a... There are people who still want to buy physical discs. Yeah. Like me. I, I, well, because it's because not only can you do... You could sell it. If you want it. Yep. It's like, it's the same reason you put books on your shelf. And it's like, like, there's, it's not, it's not as impressive or viscerally appealing or aesthetically pleasing to just scroll through a hundred digital game squares than to look at like a stack and look at the art on it. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it's like owning LPs. It's like buying albums. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's just a different form of media. And that's honestly, I think, what's going to be, like, not any, I don't think anytime soon, but I'll probably say, like, maybe, like, five to ten years from now, I can honestly see, like, physical copies of games becoming that, like, oh, it's, you, you know, there's... It'll be the vintage hipster thing exactly. to do. Mm -hmm. But, um... And we'll be ahead of the curb. <laughs> of course. But, uh, really, uh, just kind of mentioning all these stats and everything of what the PS4 is, um, it really, really, if they kind of... If they just make a more powerful PS4 Pro, I think that would be the best way to do it. I honestly don't think that, that they're going to do that, though. They're not going to release a new system with just an improvement on it. Like, because the Pro is rushed. And... No, but, that, but like, I, mean, I guess. But what I'm saying is, like... <sighs> well, like, an improved PS4 Pro might as well just be called the PS5, then. That's what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, but, like, they're going to have to... Basically, it should essentially be... Almost, it's like if you take one piece of wood off of a ship and mm -hmm. replace it, it's still the same ship. Yeah. But if you take all of them apart and you rebuild it, is it the same ship or is it a different ship? Well, you know? like, what I mean is, like, you have to use top of the... Like, you have to use the most current, like, G, like the most RAM... The co most cost-effective... The current things. Yeah. Like, so because I am paying, like, $500 See, for it. See, exactly. Like, the only people who will, will be people like Unless me. it has holographic projectors built in. Then I'll pay $500. If I don't even need a screen when I buy it, and it just projects it onto my wall, then I'll pay Done. $500. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. But, uh, it's... I'm, again, I'm being... I'm trying to be as cost efficient, because really... How you win is price. Yeah. Like that, like we could go ahead and argue. Well, yeah, but I mean, even if it was super cheap and it sucked, then no one's going to buy it. Well, yeah. Well, mm, I don't know. What if, well, if it doesn't do what it's No, 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 no. The reason why I give you that is because the 360, like the 360 when it first came out, red ringed all of the time. Well, that's because it was the first one. But those were selling like hotcakes. Well, that's because that was the best system to get at the time. That was, that was, I mean, there was no competition. The PS2 wasn't competing with the 360. Not at the time, but That's even a, even the year after, mind you, Xbox had one year over the PS3, and then even the year the PS3 came out, they went ahead and shot themselves in the foot because of the pricing yep. and all of that. And still, even with that, like people still put up with the Red Ring of Death. Then, yeah, I sent mine in like, twice before like, I, before the new models came out. That's what I'm saying. People will put up with like I'm but not they're, saying they're not going to put up with no. it now. Oh God, no! And I don't see that ever happening because of that reason. Right. Like the 360 was rushed out to market. That's why. As was the PS3 and wait, what was it? Yeah. Yeah. The, oh yeah, 360. That was my other. 360. Yeah, yeah. The 360 was rushed out. Yep. And the PS3 has been uh, in the works. So like yep. they just wanted it was uh, one of those. It's ahead of its times. Now the Xbox One kind of fell prey to that. That's yeah. why it was uh, it hasn't been doing well. Let's just be thankful and take a moment that we don't have to deal with power bricks anymore. 
Yeah. Let's just be thankful yeah, for that. I like that. that has just made life so much easier to have oh, just agree. one chord. Yeah, I agree. So all you really need is an HDMI and one other chord, and you're ready Done. to go. Done. It's great. Um, but the, those are kind of the kind of the things I want. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else that I'm like like Blu-ray? It still has to read Blu-rays. Well, obviously. Well, I mean, oh, it should be. It, uh, it should do 4K Blu-rays. Oh, yeah. Right out the well, gate. Well, but yeah, but we were saying if it does 4K to begin with, then... Pro doesn't do it. You can't put 4K Blu-ray player uh, disc into the right, Pro. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying though. It's because well, the Pro was never fully 4K optimized. It it upscales like to like it's not true 4K like the One X is. Yeah, but the uh, the stand the current Xbox Ones uh, does up res not as well as the Pro does, but it is a 4K yes, Blu-ray player. But yes, should be able to do that. Like as well. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you should be able to play 4K 4K Blu-rays you know, in the in the whatever the PS5 would be. I mean, I think that like. And this would only really apply, and I, I, I don't know if there's a way to do this right now because I've never tried, and if not, I think that it would be cool to have developer options on the PlayStation What 5. do you mean? Like the, um, like a, an increased ability to design on the system. No. no. Uh, that That's for developers. That, that would be straight up and down for... Yeah, I know, but it should still be there for them. Like I said, I'm, I not, I'm not following you because it's not like. Are you talking about like so that like you and I could develop a game through on the PS5, and we're just like, yeah. I mean, that'd be fun. I'm not saying. I mean, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's going to happen. No, but we're just, I, I'm, no, I can say that. I no, like no. It. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead, but I no, I I totally disagree with you there. Why? Because like you're pretty much working with the inner confines of the PS5 itself, and like. That's too much. You're messing with too much stuff inside of that system. No. No, no, no. Hmm. You should be able to put two discs at the same time, man. Shut up. <laughs> you eight year old. I want to be able to play two games at the same time on two separate TVs. I want dual screen support. They did. They tried that once with a 3D a TV. Milkshake. I want a milkshake. I want a built in cup holder. <laughs> I want, be... If it doesn't shoot a laser out of some part of it. I will not be satisfied. Shut up, you five-year-old child. I want a laser pointer shut and the up. controller so I can play with my cat while I'm playing. Shh, shut up. Hey, you asked. I can have as many de- ideas as I want. Okay. You know? Okay. And you well. can say they're dumb, which they are, but that doesn't they mean... They are dumb. That doesn't mean I can't... They are them. dumb. They're my ideas. Good to know, Blaze. I mean, oh, you know what would be cool, though? What? Um, Now, you remember back when... um. This will be my final thing, just as an idea. Mm-hmm. Like, you remember back when you could do video chatting on uh, 360 with the Connect? Remember I, that? Yeah. Like, where you could video chat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'd be cool if the, um, like, because I know there's a PS4 camera. Yeah. I think that they should just um, have the ability to, like, build that feature in. Okay, I see what you. I see because what you mean. because then like you know when you're playing a game where like let's say you know like oh take a picture of your face and put it on here or if you you know have um, oh make the internet browsing better. Um, I honestly like the PS3's internet browsing like better than I do on the PS4. Just the setup of it, not mm. not the functionality, but mm. but I think that if they had some sort of like built in like uh, camera system, mm-hmm. it would it would not only help streamers. Because you'd have one system recording your footage, and po- and you'd have the option to record yourself. Built-in features. But they but, for, the, but the PS4 camera already does that. Yeah, but I want a built-in. I don't want a separate device. Is what I'm saying. Like you'd have the like so like the camera would be in. No, the system. but then then we're, we're going to be then you're you're getting a connect into it. Which, yeah, but I'm saying you have the option to turn it off and on. Five and then five hundred bucks. I don't know, man. Cameras are cheap. I built into the I built into the system like no nah, that would be five at least five hundred no how do you know because building into this again the Xbox One Connect was a camera that you plugged in it was outside of the system that was five hundred bucks that's built into the system itself that the reason why it would be five hundred is because it's a tiny little camera one okay actually I, I I redact that I do have one fun idea custom noises. Oh, when you turn it on and off? Oh, yeah. The, well, yeah. Uploading custom noises through, like, a flash drive or, like, when you turn it on, being able to, like, as far as themes go, like, customize your themes, like, custom themes. 
put in your own imagery. So you just want more customization. Yeah, That's like I want, I want to be able to it. personalize. Like yeah, like when it, like like you know, uh, Xbox had that Forza one that when you turn it on, it makes like a car rev noise. Oh like, yeah, or like, like so being able to like take a sound sample and like do that. I think I think, I think it. I, I just I honestly I think they should just do that like for instance i would love my god of war system mm. kind of just kind of did, did like this like ice freezing if you or like if you download a theme it gives you it gives you like options for that you know okay yeah i get you yeah yeah okay well i, I get where you're going um for me just kind of finish finish it off um one uh it has to the all the gpu the cpu all the specs have to be pretty much uh the most cost efficient top of the line um Processor, GPU, CPU, all of that that is today. Um, 4K Blu-ray player does do 4K uh, right out the gate. Um, is backwards compatible to at least the PS4. Um, the controller is pretty much very the, the the look or like the feel of the PS of the PS5 controller will pretty much be very similar to the DualShock 4. But with maybe some added features, that kind of stuff. Um, Built-in panini maker. Shut up. Printer. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. If they're just printed. Um, but with customization, like that, that would I can see that it's just that that would become that would be good down the line with like custom themes. I just feel like, like there that. could be that there that's an untapped thing that mm -hmm. they definitely could have mm -hmm. the ability to do. Yeah. But um, that's kind of what, that's what I'm predicting. But and and whenever Destination PlayStation happens, I honestly think that's when they're gonna like at least announce. Because actually, uh, well, it's like we discussed in the last episode. It just like you you gather more attention when you whisper than when you yell. Yes, uh, I have found out. Uh, just uh, Microsoft. Um, I, I believe this is I, again. I want to make sure that I saw this, but I did see and oh yeah, uh, at E three twenty nineteen, Xbox might debut new hardware, and that's that's again it says might, and it would make sense because they teased the Project Scarlet last year at mm -hmm. E three twenty eighteen. So if they if PlayStation shows off whatever the PS five would be or whatever they call it. In February, it, then they're gonna have the, the PSV. That, that would be rad. Oh, that'd be so cool. You heard it here first. That would be so cool. The PSV. Oh, because then you use the Roman numeral. Yeah, well, that is the Roman. Oh, numeral. I know, but that would be rad. Yeah. Oh, that would be good. I bet they're going to. That, that would be the best. Yeah. That'd be best. And 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 a little bit, a little bit of homage to my homeboy, the Vita. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's why they'll call it the, the PS Vita Two. That's what they're. Announcing. Oh no, they're gonna announce the Vita. They're gonna announce the Vita Two and the PS Five. No, they don't announce the PS Five, <laughs> and they just announce Vita the Vita Two. two. Oh no, fifty dollars. Oh no. Oh, it just it's just stuck together with toothpicks and bubble gum, and <laughs> it's just the just it's just the Sony Xperia like <laughs> smartphone. Yeah, <laughs> they just say we've decided not to make games anymore. We're getting into the smartphone business. Oh man, but no, I I It'd would love I would love <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I would love that would be really rad. They call it the PS Five, but it's the PSV with the Roman numeral. I feel like I feel that like, would be cool. I feel like now that I've said that, that's too good of an idea for them not to do it, because like, I mean, although the Five also does have like a graphic symmetry with the S, yeah. So, so it's like it really could go either uh, way. Let me see the well, if you, yeah, because e a, a Five and an S. S. Yeah, I mean, because the S like is if like they this. stylize the five, yeah, then, you know what I mean. Unless they like combine the like all the letters into like you know like a streamlined you know. I guess honestly, I think what would look the best is you have the P S V. That would that just honestly that just, yeah, just looks better. Like maybe a rounded V to like make it like more. I don't know. Cause no, no, I keep like just. All right. That that it just looks better, in my opinion. I mean, but, I was my idea, so you don't have to argue. Uh, with me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <most> definitely. <laughs> it was. I'm there sorry. 
Oh man! If it happens, you know Stony so Stony 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 <laughs> Stony's PSV baby coming out soon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, I just... But no, but no, yeah, they they would have they, they stole it for me. Yeah. If they do it. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. You hear it here first they, on They DualShock. legally changed You heard it here first on to... DualShock. No, they... Yo, Sean Layden, Shuhei Yoshida, you better take like, take that and... Take notes, class <laughs> <session. laughs> and you, And they're going to legally change their name to Stony. <laughs> just S-T-O-N-Y. <laughs> so why did you add a T? Because it's turned over here. I don't know. There'll be a reason. You're so stupid. It's because we make the PSV and you can't tell me what to do. You're so stupid, Blaze. <laughs> no, maybe it's because I'm just so radically smart and genius <laughs> that it's just... I, I'm like Groot. Or you're stony. Well, yeah, no. Because, because in the Marvel Universe, Groot is so astronomically intelligent that everything he says, everyone hears him just say, I am Groot. Because what he's actually saying is so above... What anyone can understand that he sounds like he can't say anything. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. Hey, it's true. I, I'm not saying you're not wrong. <laughs> but, yeah. But, guys, please let us know what you guys are want out of the PS5. If you agree with what I said, what with what Blaze said. Um, if there's anything that anything else that you would like out of the PS5, please let us know in the comments. We always do appreciate that. But, guys... Thank you so much for watching. We always appreciate it. I don't think there's anything else that you want to say about that topic, did you? Um, if it transformed, that'd be cool. <laughs> Transformers! Da -da -da -da. No, but yeah, like you just push a button and you're like, maybe your PS5 pops up on wheels or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, but he's just thinking of cool stuff for that system. To hey, do man. For no reason. Hey, you know what? They're they might not be practical, but they're creative. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Well, props to you, Blaze. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. We always do appreciate it. If you haven't already, if you're not watching this on YouTube, go ahead and watch, uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Brotherhood of Geeks. Go ahead and press the subscribe button. And if you haven't already, press the bell icon. That way, whenever we put up a video, you know we put up a video. You can also go ahead and follow us on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash the Brotherhood of Geeks. You can also follow me and the channel on Twitter, which is at DualShocked BOG. That's the name of this PlayStation podcast, DualShocked BOG. And then you can also watch us on our Twitch channel when we stream at twitch.tv slash Brotherhood of Geeks. Anything else from you, Blaze? No. No? No. I'm good. Awesome. Great. That's... That's awesome. Well, I always appreciate Except, it. Except uh, all you watch, and if you could just have a great day. There you go. Well, all right. Well, then. I'm Brett J. Rasmussen. That's Guru Blaze. And as always, live to play. Play together. We'll see you guys next time.